Hit it. Crazy whiskey. Get in, sit down, buckle up. Crazy whiskey. Get in, sit down, buckle up. Crazy whiskey. Cruise with Steak, CryptidCon Recap Show 2018. We're live on Grimerica.ca slash FM. I'm joined by Mr. James Cruz. What's up, bitch? And I'm joined by Mr. Leonidas. What's up? And I'm joined by Mr. Jerry Cthulhu. Hello. And of course, the wonderful guy who made that song, Pseudo James Cruz, a.k.a. Felix, a.k.a. Cliff Wall. What's up? You know, we may have a couple uh, stragglers. We might have a couple stragglers hopping in. Uh, I think Nikki the Dude, he may join us. Join us up a little later. The um, Dude. Yeah, yes. Nikki, Nikki the Dude. Ren, Ren might pop in. He had some uh, other things that he was talking about maybe canceling, but I told him don't do it. So maybe not. Maybe Bill Anderson will come in. Who knows? Oh. It's out there, though. So we're just, oh, Billy. We're I got a Bill Anderson story, too. Oh, Bill's a legend, man. Bill's, he's... <laughs> He's such a great dude. <laughs> so, guys, we made it. We went to CryptidCon in, we did uh, all in Frankfurt, Kentucky. Yeah. We all met. We all hugged. We had a fucking amazing we time. We hugged a lot. We hugged yeah, a lot. dude. I'm, I'm, I'm a hugger. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm a hugger. He's a hugger. I got no problem with it. And we hugged other people a lot. Too. Yeah. Yeah, there's lots of hugs. We, we spread the love. Mm-hmm. Totally. Definitely. Hugs all around. Um, I just I want to wanna say, James... That when I when when I saw you in that parking garage, I did a full dead sprint at least at least a hundred meters and just jumped at into least. your arms and you spun me around and it was straight out of a movie. Like it was it was the most romantic event of my life, I think. <laughs> right round. It really was. Right round. He was, he was floating. Floating all 140 pounds of him. But first we had to find him. we had to find James. We didn't know where he was. Yeah, I, I, I parked I had my own level. <laughs> yeah, yeah. James took the second level all by himself on the parking garage like a boss. <laughs> it was all full in the first one. We're like, who parks in a full lot? <laughs> Man. Yeah, so, dude. yeah, so I pulled to, you know, and this is like a five star resort, you know, but then I pulled it into like the, you know, second level of the parking garage. I'm like, Leo, where do I go? <laughs> And uh, then there he comes running. Uh, yeah, there he comes it was, running. It was epic. With arms, yeah, arms wide open. Arms wide open. And, uh, With arms wide open. Yeah, it really was, man. Did you guys? Did you guys bring uh, walkie talkies or anything? Oh no, uh, that would have been sweet no. though if we had two. No, but I did have some. I could have brought. It's like 2018, and I just use my phone, dude. That's what we do. <laughs> yeah, walkie talkies are quicker. Nah, true, right. No, nah, yeah. but um, it really was. It was awesome, man. I, you know, the whole the whole weekend was just nuts. <laughs> it was fun. Uh, yeah, you got the you got the you know, you got to sit in on some talks, and 
Most, yeah, mostly just uh, meeting people, man. That's what it's all Dude, about, so many I people. guess, you know. So I many mean, people. And now, how, how about how, like, people actually, there were, were, like, man, people knew, like, Seth Breedlove heard of our podcast? <laughs> like, I don't think anybody yeah. listened, but they're kind of like, I think I've heard of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, I know it, yeah. It was crazy. There, it was very unique experience, again, you know. You know, the one I did out in, uh, you know, Portland. And yeah, that was, that was pretty wild. <laughs> and, uh, and to this thing where it's where more of an industry type thing, you know, and here and people know, you know, yeah, some do, some don't. And then the ones that did, you were, I was pretty blown away from that, man. I think this is, uh, this is, this is their second annual conference in Frankfurt. And I just got a uh, post from Facebook. They're talking about having next year's in Lexington or Louisville. So hopefully it's Louisville. So it's a little bit closer to everyone. Yeah. Um, that's driving down. And I think Louisville is a better spot. Yeah. Cause I mean, by that time we're going to have 5g rolled out. So we might actually have a lot of cryptids that just kind of pop into manifest into the uh, actual <laughs> conference. No, no, no. It's no. supposed to keep the Nephilim away. Oh Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Either Man. way, keep the up out of the ground. <laughs> oh. So thanks, Leo. You you made this happen, man. Like you, if if longtime listeners of the show will remember the intro, like months ago, when you were like, "Listen, guys, if I get this, will you all go?" And it was like, "Yeah, sure. Let's let's do it." And then it it yeah. happened. It all everything happened. Like that's it's just it was just incredible. It all happened. It's You're all very happening. Welcome. It was a blast. Yeah, man, that was that was. It amazing. was all happening in Frankfurt. Yeah, dude. Oh, man. and that that first night when we all got there and just uh, having Jerry and Ren go back and forth about space, just being all drunk at like <laughs> at like two in the morning in a hotel bar. Or... Let me go back and forth. But no, it was a discussion. It was a good discussion about yeah. it. <laughs> and Bill's Bill's like. Well, yeah, I can get two more beers if you guys want to continue this. And it's like, we need to sleep, Bill. Going. Yeah, well, dude. Well, first of all, at 11 o'clock, last call. We were last call, so we all run up and buy two beers. What not? <laughs> yeah. Everyone clears out of there. We're still sitting around goofing around. And Bill comes back. Hey, they're still selling beer like for another three hours. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he did. He worked some kind of magic. <laughs> he got kind of... rid of the other people. Every time I turn yeah. around, there was another beer in front of me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My favorite is when Anderson lights up a smoke in the bar. Oh, <laughs> I I his back, like, no one's going to see it. Yeah, That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously, the bartender was unaware. So he, yeah. So. Uh, dude, were, it was, like, it was Kentucky. Was no dude, so. it was Kentucky Ooh. bourbon barrel ale. Oh, yeah. You were drinking those bourbon beers, Kentucky man. Kentucky bourbon barrel ale. It's like, ah, uh, that's what, that's what got you. That's all. Oh, yeah. yeah what, I, what happened to you on that first night, James? Yeah. What happened? Yeah. Just, took a lap and i ended up just sleeping in the bathroom because <laughs> <laughs> i went upstairs and ren comes in the room with his hands full of like your wallet your cell phone your oh, gopro yeah. and all this other stuff and he's like uh i don't i don't know where james went he's like but i have all his stuff right here <laughs> no, it was great it would have yeah, been better if, it, it would have been better if you would have brought up the, your shoes as well <laughs> your wallet just just your cell phone full blown missing four one one time here. Yeah. <laughs> so we were all. I think we had pizza, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's, I don't remember much of it, but yeah, apparently that's I had when a we met those. I that's did, when we met those like two dudes. <laughs> those two Texas dudes too. Those guys were awesome. Taco and Joe. Yeah, Taco and Joe. Yes, they were From, great people. I have their, I have, like fan custom art. I have their cards somewhere. Anyway, so what happened was we finished our pizza. We we all wanted to go vape, so we walked outside. James like I gotta go to the bathroom. I'll meet you out there. So he took off and left his wallet, his GoPro, and his your phone. My phone. Yeah. On the table. And <laughs> there was no one there. I'm like, no oh, big okay. deal if it was only a five minute thing, but it yeah, yeah. Well, so I just took it. I got I'll get your stuff. I'll take it outside. I'm we stood outside for an hour and a half, maybe. <laughs> and crazy. I totally forgot about James. I'm like, where the fuck did yeah. he go? And Bill was going to go to bed. I'm like, here, take this and give it to James. Or so I, I don't know why I gave it to him. So I did. I didn't want to be responsible for it. Right, right, just, just pass it. Even off. though I'm, I was in the same room as James. Yeah, I was just going to say. Even I didn't even think about that. I didn't yes. want you to get. 
like going crazy looking for your stuff. We all thought you'd be back at the table. No, yeah, I know. I ended up when I when I when I awoke, <laughs> and uh, I'm like, oh man, I'm still in the bathroom. <laughs> Oh, and yeah. uh yeah and, and no one came in the entire time yeah dude, were you, in a, were you in a stall when you passed out were you at the urinal no i wasn't at the urinal no <laughs> no <clears throat> and uh should have brought, brought a fanny pack the best part though oh that would have been sweet day. and anderson okay. doesn't remember giving that shit to run right <laughs> <laughs> that's great so no it, was, it was just a so, pass. So then Bill's running around like, oh, what did I do with everything? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to start oh, looking uh, at in the where the pool was to see if you were any anywhere near a body of water. Floating in the pool. Yeah, man. I thought you got I thought you got 411 there for a minute. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah, yeah dude. No, 411. I, Speaking yeah, of 411. You know, I saw those black helicopters. Oh, totally, man. Okay, so, dude, what was weird, I made a comment, I think, to Leonidas about this. Dude, that entire time, we were outside, like, we were outside quite a bit in front of that hotel. I never saw one cop drive by. I never saw one cop the entire time. No, not at all. What, were they all undercover? Sneaky? No, they're in line like Suburbans. Oh, okay. That's no, because everyone has an assault rifle in the back of their truck. <laughs> <laughs> Police state. Down in Kentucky. The, the um, only... <laughs> time i heard emergency stuff was on saturday afternoon which you were about to talk about right? speaking uh, of 411 oh you talking oh about david politis yes yeah. oh yeah yeah so uh <laughs> david yeah. politis james you took notes you want to read your notes from that from that uh oh, that from missing that four- talk yeah from that missing or- 411 talk uh sure yeah Let dude i know you took substantial on. notes i watched you note taken actually i did man you know what i wish i really I wish i would have went you know felix is talking about like you know um walkie talkies and shit i wish i would have had a, a like a pen and paper you know i would have rather take notes that way but <laughs> why don't you just fucking record them talking Oh, I did. David Politis would have. I did. I secretly it. recorded it. He probably dude, would have he, snipered you, dude. He shut a dude down that had a camera. Well, up. See, here's like, the thing. Like, I brought microwaves from his head. So just. I brought it. all my camera equipment, uh, professional recording equipment. Yeah. And I went. I talked to the um, the event coordinators, which, by the way, were really polite, awesome. Because um, I asked them, I said, "What's the policy about recording the panels?" Because typically, you know. Me and, and my crew, we've been to different panels like Days of the Dead, um, you know, horror conventions and stuff. And really, it just depends on the on the the event. So he said, "Well, it's up to the speaker." And I went to David Politis and I asked him. I said, "Well, is it okay if we record um, your speech?" And and they were like, "Absolutely not, <laughs> no." And I'm like, "Shit, okay." Um, well, thank you. I bought a couple of his books, which I have right here. The uh, the Hoopa Project or the Hopa Project. Do you give foot encounters you, in California? Do you give everyone who yells at you money? Uh, absolutely. Missing oh, four hundred one off the grid. Bought that book as well. Any uh, pictures in those books? Oh yeah, there's tons of pictures. He has like maps and stuff in there. Most holograms, but yeah. So during the event, there's a couple people in there who who had tripod set up, and uh, they started recording. And he did the first part of the speech. He did. He talked about a little bit about Bigfoot, but he made sure that there was no correlation between that and his next segment, which was the missing four one one. And at that point, he was like, he pointed at this some chick, at this uh, chick that was in the same role as me looked at her and said, turn it off now. <laughs> and this is an awkward pause for a couple of seconds and she had to break down the camera st- equipment and stuff. But um, mm-hmm. I had a nice little recording app on my phone and I started recording and showed my phone off. So I got the whole thing and um, you might be able to uh, listen to it on OBDM here soon. I don't know. We'll see. It was... um. My guess of what he was basically, he owns the missing 411 brand and the uh, the IP, basically, right? So if he brought in UFOs or Bigfoot, then Bigfoot and UFO people could talk about it. 
well, as if it were their IP, then it wouldn't become his IP anymore. Yeah, and he if hates it, YouTube, yeah. and he hates every social media platform they possible. steal his money. Yep. <laughs> so, I mean, that's what's going on. No, I mean, and I totally respect that because he's correct. Like, and this, this it's not just him. This happens with a lot of people. They'll take their books, they'll buy the books, and they'll resell them on Amazon for a lot more than what he's actually selling them for. So, that's I not real. I'm, but I mean, like, okay, never mind. But what I'm saying, it depends on like the subject matter. So, you know, they they basically resell his books for a lot of money. Who does? Anyone that buys the books, it doesn't that's matter. Not, there's nothing wrong with that. But what I'm saying is, that. what I'm saying is that people who are trying to find the information, people are upselling the books at a much higher price point than what he's selling them as. And he, they are um, trying to sell it. They're not selling as a used book is what I'm saying. That typically, when you buy a book and you resell it, you're selling it for less than the actual cost of the book. Because it's used and not out of print. Yeah. And they're just getting, they're jacking it up. Highway robbery. Man, you got all your books signed too, right, Leo? Yeah, he signed both of them. All of his shit is available on Amazon. Oh, so Which he doesn't. He says is like way more than. Yeah. But like all these guys say, all, you know, all their stuff is way more than it is. But it's uh, he's selling his own copies of his books for eighty bucks. No, he's not. He he's not David Pilates. He does not sell any of his books on Amazon. That is not him. Okay. He only sells through his website, the, the Can-Am Project. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. That's where I he sells it from. Yeah. Right. So basically, he's taking himself off of Amazon. His books are only 25 bucks. Yeah, if you buy them from him, yeah. Man, David Politis. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, great. So he went. Wait. Yeah. Helicopter. No. <laughs> right now? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> No, yeah, basically he yeah. um, a little bit. Oh yeah, <laughs> you got the little ASMR hel- helicopter, little helo. <laughs> I couldn't. It might have been black, but it's dark out. But what do, what do you got, James? <laughs> no, yeah, sure. We sat down. It was like one thirty. I have this in my my notes. <laughs> no, but uh, let's see. Uh, First of all, he went into, uh, you know, it's Crypticon. So he started off with some Bigfoot stuff and basically uh, went over like uh, Bigfoot, ape versus human feedback and the blowback on his book, the, the, Hope, the Hopa Project, which is like a tribal Bigfoot type deal. And then basically in that book, it's stating that the Hoopa. The hoopa. There you go. Uh, it's stating that, like, say you take the hair off a, uh, a big, you know, standard Bigfoot, and then basically it looks like a uh, Native American man. Mm-hmm. Well, all the yeah. DNA, like every single, every every DNA sample that they ever have from it, it's it's human, right? Didn't he say something it's like always, that? Yep, it's always not, human. Yeah, one hundred percent human. There's never been a single piece of bigfoot evidence that it's tested Dude, he's, he's like a real no nonsense kind of guy like he was yeah. like he was just yeah he sticks to the facts yeah. did you see yes. his hair oh yeah actually yeah, that's he's yeah, that's a no nonsense haircut right there <laughs> he did indeed, indeed. He did one one type of or i don't know if he did it or somebody i don't know his crew or something or whatever but anyway they they basically like reverse taped like a tree to try to get samples like hair samples, like, you know, cause no one's ever around when Bigfoot is. So, you know, if, if Bigfoot, you know, brushes up against a tree or something, maybe this hair would stick to it. And even that it was always human. Like, so. Yeah. He had a, um, he had a, a profiler. Um, oh, draw it and stuff. Yeah. Basically re recreate the, the, um, the sketches of Bigfoot without all the hair. And it resembled closely to um, Native American man. Yeah. So then, um, which is interesting because you know he talks about every time they pull this this DNA, every time they get these samples, it comes out human. Which 
um, as he was talking about, upsets a lot of people in the Bigfoot community. They don't want to um, cross streams. They don't want to acknowledge that type of information. They don't want to be shocked out of their belief system. Right. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I have a question. What kind of DNA testing do they actually do on this shit? The hair. Uh, that's a good because, question. You know, like, normal DNA testing when they do for crimes and stuff. I think they use it's called a PS- PCR or PNR test. Yes. I don't know if anyone knows this, but it only uh, maps. It matches like the the lowest common denominator of markers within a genetic sample with another person's lowest common denominator marker. These these markers, you've seen them. They look kind of like barcodes, but not really. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not accurate as far as let me rephrase that. A comparison of genes on that level is nowhere in, is nothing like a uh, the genome being sequenced. Let's see. They did. They had a team of scientists that team a team of scientists can verify that their five year long DNA study, currently under peer reviewed, confirms the existence of of the, oh yeah, this is this this. It, it may just have the markers for human. Yeah. What I was trying to say though, basically, yeah. is that our current genetic testing may not be. Um, sensitive enough to notice the differences between humans and what Bigfoot is. It's possible. You're at uh, using saying. these meta markers. Yeah. I'm sure there's even, that's a good point. Even, uh, you know, which is kind of cool. Like, you know, after you, listening to him talk, you could even go back yourself, like, you know, which is what we do. We dive mm-hmm. into these things. You can even research the stuff that he said, you know, so you know, get another I just wanted to stand anger. there and challenge him on everything he said. Why Can is you that? Imagine? What do you mean? <laughs> Who is that? You would have had a handler come out of like the middle row of like the silent takedown. <laughs> I mean, it was out. it was such shocking information <laughs> that someone actually passed out. Right. Yeah. Oh man. So that yeah. was like no, 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 next, no. <laughs> my next thing was uh, my. And then he goes into the whole missing four hundred one stuff and. Goes over the basic facts, you know, like often found by bodies of water around what he he had the map of where they're all found, you know, which is primarily by bodies of water. But if you really think about that too, well, it because you know they had a map of, of North America and it's all on the sides around Great Lakes around and nothing like spanning you know the middle of the country. But guess what? Nobody lives <laughs> in the middle of the country. I think you that's be safe. Right. Move to Kansas. There's, yeah, no, it, there's no pattern to where it is. It's just near water. It's, it's really population. Path. Yeah. It, yeah. It, so. And all that stuff's pretty benign. The, the weird shit is about when they're found and how they totally and how yeah, they're man. found. Yeah. 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 Clothes. Yeah. They, they, I mean, you can go into are a people ton found of facts that people are found in like muddy areas with just their socks on, but their socks are completely clean. Like clean. what the hell is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah and there's like no footprint and there's nothing even showing that they could have been dropped there like it's yeah. dude missing there was that one crazy three-year-old who like elevated ten thousand feet and six miles away or something yeah close to that. <laughs> it's just crazy actually and oh and for everyone out there if you go to uh na bigfoot research.com that's politis's re- uh bigfoot research group so it's na bigfoot research.com <clears throat> so then he goes well they say then he goes into the 401 stuff and like a little bit into that dude i i have old guy collapsed during speech women shouts is there a doctor in the house and i lol then i'm thinking about where i am here at cryptic god and there is no fucking doctor in the house i can guarantee you that wait that really happened <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, the this dude, one, yeah this he had like a com- stroke or complete, something. Dude. Well, totally no, out. what yeah. what happened was they said that he had a stroke. The dude had a stroke like a He's, month or two ago, or or yeah. just recently he did. So uh, I mean, he was conscious and stuff when they were walking him out. But it was a, re- a, a refresh stroke. No, I, yeah, I think he was probably. I, just I don't hot. think he had a stroke. I think he locked his knees and then because he was standing right. up for too mm-hmm. long. He was on the side of the 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 hall or whatever. Yeah, and man, there was that, that room was packed. Like two ambulances showed up. Shit, yeah. dude. Yeah, and then uh you Can know I give him a speech? Why he yeah, mid speech and then Politis like like a boss, like a champ. The show must go on. I mean he walked over for a second, gave it a point, 
and then walked right back up to the front. And He's like, all right. And then he just, he just went right back into his talk and didn't even yeah. acknowledge it. Like, it's, like a prayer or something? Like, our no, God, he's a robot. He's, no, a, he's a no. machine, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Well, he's an ex-cop and stuff. He's, yeah. he's to- totally. He's by and the And then book. he goes back over. Uh, he goes over case uh, cases and file fa- in the facts and stuff, you know. Basically, it was a lot of water focus, you know, it was the majority of a lot of these facts in, um, let's see, he has a great ability to include one of his many books on almost every slide of his PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> I have that in my notes, too. There's great marketer. There's a yeah, lot. Oh, of, he's a uh, master marketer. Is he talking I, I about might be like exaggerating this? that a little. What are you saying, Felix? <laughs> My bad. Is he talk about, I know like um, in Wisconsin and kind of the Midwest, there's like all those uh, college kids that went missing along rivers. And they say that there's little smiley face stickers that are nearby the body. Oh, no, that that's the smiley face killer, isn't it? Is it, is, I isn't know, that but, a different dude? Yeah, but there's no, different dude? there's no substantial evidence connecting any of that to. Yeah, missing 411. Those cases. Just now, that it's by water. He, he does talk about how um, majority of the people that are that are taken are, um, you know, athletes, young adults in college, or they're like physicists, able-bodied people, extremely intelligent people, intellects. Um, they go missing, like me. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You're at risk for going missing for sure. <laughs> so Politis was awesome. It was probably the, I mean. It was a good. It was a good talk. It was. It was probably the coolest one there for sure. Well, Dude, he he went. And, he went uh, like twenty minutes over too. Like they were like the uh-huh. the whole next conference. Like they were all standing there ready to go, and he's just still going. And he's like, "How much time Same do I Walton's. got?" Somebody stroked yeah. out during his thing. Yeah, yeah. So he could keep going. Do you have, a, just, do you have a laser pointer? Uh no, but there were laser pointer. There were some presentations with laser pointers. That's for sure. G- Jerry has one. I'm afraid to get sued if I say anything nasty. So. <laughs> So, uh, I did bring my laser pointer. <laughs> Got to talk to airplanes, man. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to catch uh, Graham's aliens. Mm-hmm. Graham's did, he, uh, did they take questions from the audience or do any like? Uh, um, Q&A? some of them did. Yeah, most of them did. Like Politis, yeah, everyone didn't. did except Politis. Yeah, and, and well, he Harris ran out of Walton. time, so no one had a chance yeah. to ask any questions. Walton, Walton, Walton didn't either. Do they pass around like a microphone, or you like go up to a microphone or no, something? No, it's it's a small Ooh, conference room. You could you could yell and everybody <laughs> could hear. It wasn't Do like not, a, uh, overestimate the size of this venue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they they were I just noticed like, from the pictures it looked kind of like. Uh, I could give you some larger yeah. range pictures. No, I mean, I'd say I'd say there was uh, a, what maybe a hundred people in there. Wedding would crash this joint to the ground. Yeah. Oh, which was great because there was a wedding going on at the same time at that hotel, and then it was just like, "Are you here for the wedding? Are you here for the fucking no, man? We're here to see weird, weird Bigfoot stuff." Did, yeah, you were probably too drunk when the. Are you here to see the out. monsters? Bridesmaids. <laughs> yeah, I guess, there were like three really cute bridesmaids who came back. What night was this? Saturday night. Yeah, I talked to him. Saturday. There was Dude, a that one was that was crashed. covered in tattoos. Do you remember that one? Yes, no. I talked to her. She was yeah. really wasted. Oh yeah. Dude, oh yeah, that's what those those were those chicks out front. They were yeah. super freaking intoxicated. Yeah. What? Hammered. Hammered. I don't remember this at all. Cause you were gone. Um was I? Or was this? Yeah, I don't what, think you were there. Was no, it Friday was, night? You couldn't take your eyes off of MJ. Honestly, oh, yeah, that's, that's probably right. what it was. That's why he was gone. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, Michael Jordan? Well, yeah, Michael Jordan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got a little too drunk and a little too horny. So we're just not going to talk about that anymore. <laughs> you were looking the wrong way is what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Dude, that was fun as fuck. Hey, Dude, regardless, was- uh, yeah, MJ was pretty cool, though. MJ was cool as fuck. We need to go to MJ Vegas. Dickinson. Mm-hmm. I think it's just Dixon, maybe. But I like Dickinson. M- Dickinson. She's the founder Dick- of Sage Paranormal UK. It's Dickinson. Mm-hmm. D- I- yeah, she's D- a paranormal D- investigator. D- I- Dickinson. Dickinson. South African cryptids, which he's way more into aliens and in mythology, yeah, all ghosts that and magic, ghosts, ghosts and magic, yeah. ghosts. She's a sick yeah. medium. Yeah, good stuff. We'll get her out. She's gonna come on the Dude, show. Dude, that that night, that was when they uh, they had the after party with the fucking yeah. karaoke bar, yeah. and yeah. that was oh, incredible. Karaoke. Ren. Is a fucking karaoke master. He's a beast, dude. dude I've got I've got two here. videos that I'm gonna upload to the Google Drive of Ren doing karaoke, <laughs> and uh, 
And dude, it was great because even like, what was it? It was like Leo, you were in there. I know Run was in there. We were singing. Uh, we were singing Bohemian Rhapsody, and I think Santa. Yeah, we're the only Sublime. people up there singing. Everyone else dude, is sitting around. Everybody's like, sitting all around the corner, and like our three drunk asses are screaming the words <laughs> with the karaoke singer, just like. <laughs> oh, we represented well, dude. We did. We yeah. did. Um, real quick, this reminds sure. me. Uh, I was on YouTube, and uh, I was suggested a video, and the video suggestion was some random guy. Uh, showing his reaction of listening to Bohemian Rhapsody for the black first dude, time. A black dude? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my God. I saw that. <laughs> oh, I love the transition. <laughs> he was loving it. And everyone in the comments was saying. He's really funny. That he never. Mm. I can't like, believe it. No never. way you never heard that song before. <laughs> yeah. I heard him listening to uh, Pink Floyd's Time. It's like 60 years old. I never heard it before. Uh, yeah. That's great. <laughs> you got uh, the same suggestion as me then. So let's see. <laughs> well, they had the, uh, I don't know were if you, you guys were in videos. <laughs> Probably. I don't know if you guys were in the uh, panel. Um, what was it? Shotguns and goblins. Oh guns yeah. Dude, that was a good I one. Was gonna mention yeah. Blake Smith. That was a great panel. Um, it was monster talk pod. Is, Hop, the is, Hopkinsville, uh, the Hops, Hopkinsville case. It's Kentucky monster store. <laughs> guns and goblins. Well, well, that was, yeah, he talked about that. But uh, Guns and Goblins is a uh, a Kentucky monster story, um, and basically, yeah, it's like different. It's almost like a Mothman type situation. Um, it's a Hopkinsville r- story. <laughs> yeah, relation to uh, Barn it's the Goblins. It's the Goblins, man. These people, oh, okay. they it was it was the forties, and they just saw uh, they were getting terrorized by these like goblins that actually like they 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 claim that they glue they were glowing in the dark and shit and uh yeah. and yeah dude well i guess uh they were they were shooting out their uh, screen window with like shotguns and guns and people were trying to yeah. debunk it but he ended up like going to the field and shooting into a screen to show like cuz they're like no i'd blow the screen through and he like he did a little experiment like that and it was it, it could like, work no one ever no one ever like recreated any of this he's like what if it's true you know yeah. and yeah you take a 20 gauge shotgun through through a uh, screen window uh, you know yeah, window man. screen and a 22 um, but dude i don't I, yeah i don't buy the owl thing though man cuz it's like you know these people they've They've been living in the in in the backwoods their entire lives. It's like the fifties. Like they know what owls are. Like I think if you and inco- like, dude, you're gonna know the difference between a regular animal. That just animal. depends on whether or not moonshine was involved. And yeah, that is true. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, because the way they explained how they looked, and but then there was also yeah, which was kind of weird too. Like okay, there there is like these like five five or six of these things jumping all over the place and stuff like would there be five or six owls and like all these random creatures at your house at one time attacking you like it it doesn't make that part didn't make sense to me yeah man it's nuts like they look like furbies or what um no they look look like goblins (laughs) <laughs> this little yeah. little diminutive creatures that that they had, had big ears. They, you know what they looked like, dude? Is gremlins like the yeah, the, exactly. the scary gremlins? Yeah, the bad gremlins, not the furry ones. Oh. They had green skin. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, the, the goblin. Yeah, the, the goblin. goblin. The goblin. <laughs> yeah. The whole story reminded me of um, that old ABC movie of the week trilogy of terror. Oh jeez. Hmm. Okay. That so one that, terrified me. The one with the doll. Yep. In, the, in the the chain. Take the bracelet off the thing and go stabby on you. Stabby. Yeah. That scared yeah, the I, shit out of me when I was a kid. I vaguely remember that. But I, I liked I Blake Smith. That. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, dude, that, was that, that show was pretty cool, man. That, or that presentation was, you know, I liked that a lot. That was cool. That's a good talk. Yeah, let's see. The other one I have is uh, Ron Ronald Murphy. Oh, he yeah. talked about fairies. Yeah, fairy dude was so fairy wicked. Room. Yeah. Oh, Me and him yeah. shared a moment. Oh, you did? <laughs> nice. At his booth. Well, oh, under, okay. Under it. Under it. <laughs> yeah, dude, but good. he went over it like myths and legends, like Owl, Owl Man, uh, the Jer- um, Jersey Devil, uh, Bat Squatch. It, you know, Bat Bigfoot squatch. with wings. And he yeah. got sure, sheep squatch too. Did he talk about that? A sheep squatch? No, I don't I swear. Even, sweet I don't squatch. know. Sweet sheep squatch. Jeez. But the but he I talked to him after his his thing too, and uh, he's gonna come on. I got him. So. I got him too. Oh, yeah, on my man. show. That's oh, awesome. Yeah. 
<laughs> I got four new guests. That's all I got to say. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know that was cool too. Like everyone's, you know, with most of this, you know, doing, you know, these shows, everyone's usually pretty cool about, you know, wanting to come on, you know, yeah. promote dude, their that's stuff. The thing. Like every, everybody there, like there was no like shit dickheads or anything. Like everybody was cool as hell. Every single there person was, that there was one person there who was like super above, like, I don't know how to, you mm-hmm. know, that celeb level, <laughs> you know, that everyone was in awe of. So everyone, there was easy pickings all around because the right. other guy was there. Yeah. That's, I got yeah. you. The Ghost Adventures dude. It was David Duke. Oh, that Nick Groff or, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick yeah. Groff. Thanks. Nick Groff. Yeah. Uh, so he's like this magnet that everyone's looking at and you could ask them while they're looking, Hey, want to be on my show? Sure. I'll be that, that big someday. If I go on your show, you know what his booth was the, him and his chick or whatever had like, you could buy like uh, glamor shots. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> yeah wow. That's all they were selling. Well, they would autograph them. If you bought <laughs> yeah, them. They would autograph them, but wow. yeah, that's how it works at the conventions. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. But I everyone else had like way cool stuff, you know. They would have. No, I would. Cool. I would say that the quality of the vendors, um, I was surprised. There's a lot of good stuff there. Yeah, dude. Taco and Joe had some is, great shirts. Yeah, I mean, there's some. There was some good shirts there. There were um, a few oh, artists dude, I there. I bought four of them. They were yeah. so cool. I, I bought it, some I custom uh, Dogman prints. You can see one behind me right now. Um, Ooh. Some. I think they had some like Bigfoot castings. Yes, they, there was a couple of people who had some. Ca- I didn't even think about them. Like, man, I should have got. Yeah, one there were a lot of casts. That one, there was one table. I think it was like the first day. There was a ton of casts. It was a little picked over the second day. I had his own room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was all these casts and stuff. Um, yeah, man. Oh, shout out to. Uh, <clears throat> um. Oh, uh, get it, James. You got it. Shout him out. Shout him out. <laughs> Come on. Um. Fuck. Never mind. They got a I'll podcast think of it later. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I'm. You talking about monsters among monsters us? Monsters and something. Oh, that yeah, that, those yeah, that was Der- Derek were... Hayes with Monsters Among Us. Yeah. He's gonna come on. Monsters Among Us. Yeah, yeah, I've been telling you. I told you guys about him. Yeah. Hey, you I probably did. To him, man. We met him. Yeah, we talked. We, to him we, for we a met while. him. We talked to him yeah. for a while. Yeah, he's super is, cool. Is that yeah. the guy's table where we went to, and the people sitting there weren't actually related? at first, right? Yeah. yeah okay, okay. Yeah, we talked to his handlers for a minute. I'm looking right at me and Jerry show. did. Yeah, and then uh, me and then uh, Grim was in. Uh, yeah, yep, those <laughs> those yep. were his handlers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that was when I filled out. Yeah, they have this. Uh, you know how like loot crate and stuff. Well, they have like cryptid. He's got a thing called cryptid crate. Where I guess every month he sends out some cryptid related material. Like, um, I love that picture. <laughs> we got to pit me and Jerry with Travis Walton. Yeah, dude. There's there's a tweet out there. <laughs> that I think cool it's dropped in the chat. all hell, dude. Oh my god, dude. He's got his arms around you guys. Like that's that's a great yeah. picture right there. He, you know, he came right out, Not, right out behind that table. The, uh, the other one, the closer one. That I didn't take the picture, so I actually know. his yeah his mm-hmm. handler took the pictures. That's I don't think that was his handler. No, I think a, it was a, like a yeah totally somebody on. working with the with Crypticon. Yeah. How about that Almost dude? How about that dude yeah. with the long, flowing, beautiful hair? Like what? Like he, did you whoever he dude? was, he was a rock. He was dude, a, dude, he was a rock star. Oh yeah, the, the guy who kept sitting up front. Uh-huh. Yeah, oh, dude, he's stuff. walking around. He was like seven. He's like super tall. He was just a presence when he walked into a room. Oh, he, he, had, he had he was like a sport coat. You know, yeah, dude, he had yeah, a sport yeah, coat yeah. on with like oh, yeah. long party I didn't hair. See him. Oh, oh he, man, he, just, he looked. Like, he had alliance mane. Yeah, he did. Lots of respect for that guy. Like, oh, he looked like a <laughs> old school uh, dog, the bounty hunter. No, like no, way better star. hair. Way better hair. Like Chris his Jericho. Long <laughs> hair. Yeah, yeah. Sort of, yeah. <clears throat> but the so yeah. Oh, back to the Ron I Murphy. I <laughs> I oh yeah, Ron Murphy. Notes my notes. Dude, what I liked about Ron Murphy is he uh he gave just like happened. a thirty he gave like a thirty oh, minute dude, lecture he, yeah. and then he's like, All right, what do you guys want to talk about? He just yeah, opened the entire thing up to the so you guys got questions? Yeah. Let's let's That's just the way to do it. You're not gonna get yes. all your work fit into a half hour. Yeah. I actually asked him a question. Yeah, you did yeah. ask him a question, yeah. James. I, did. I forgot what it yeah. was, but it was a good me and him, me and me and Grim sit back there and I'm like, dude. <laughs> Did you get a straight answer? Uh, no, I asked him about okay, uh correlations because 
uh, the, he was showing all these samples of rings, like ring systems. You know, um, basically, if you took like a pen and just started drawing, like you know, your 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 uh, uh, I guess a eccentric circles, eccentric circles, yeah. Uh, like you would do just scribbling, man. You just sit there and draw a spiral, Bzzz, you know, like we've done that. Everyone's done, done, you know, f- from the dawn of time. And I have brought up screen memory as, um, as humanity, of like, you know, it goes all the way back to, you know, it, the ancient cave art. And, you know, and, and he was like, hell yeah, man. And we talked about, he talked about that for, you know, another five minutes or so. And uh, and just how like that stuff's kind of just built in you, and and you see it on walls, you know, freaking hundred thousand years ago, you know, whatever. Oh, six thousand years ago, if you go. What by do you mean, some. screen memory? Screen memory, as in, okay, you know, you grab your uh, fairy lore, because fairies have to do with rings. Okay, and but stuff like you mean that. it like you really mean it like a screen memory? I I do, yeah. As What's in, like like with art? Cave, cause it's all drawn on cave art. It, t- you know, draw a spiral, you know, a spiral, it's eccentric circles, basically. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, and you'll see that all over ancient cave art, and you, and they're showing it in the ground, they're showing it everywhere, and also, as in, as a person that you know, back then they're drawing it on the wall because that's something they experienced or they something they had seen, you know, or or or. or it can go further back to that, you know, maybe because they had that intuition to just start drawing spiral, you know, like drawing these circles. Sure. Uh, Remember, cause, you're cause looking it's related at it. to portals because you could go even right. into. Right, right, right. Because it's a vortex. It's right. A, so it's a two dimensional picture of a three dimensional thing. My camera keeps shutting off. That's the only reason why it keeps shutting off. But uh, we still love you. I know, yeah, uh, but I I brought that. It, it made sense to me at the time, and it still makes sense to my in me and my my brain right now. But uh, and I had just had that relation to it, and he was pretty uh pretty hip to it. So if you watch uh, the last or the second to last of those Tim Refat videos, about oh my guy, yeah. psychic warfare. Well, he goes into yeah. concentric circles and concentric squares and what they represent and what they represent in magic and how they are used. I, mean, well, I even brought up that ones. the show the magicians to him and how it because there's that whole fairy realm you know like i mean like there, there's so many fairy. Crazy, uh this this other i don't say dimension but they're like, all like in different I mean, worlds they're, they're different, different worlds, worlds. Yeah. yeah and that's what these circles are they're like different worlds you know that's what he was trying to correlate with that and but he also brought up like uh oh i got fairies are basically like they they you know they've been seen as like shapeshifters um and they use and they use this this shit called glamour which is basically like like a type of makeup like fairy no, dust no, or it's fairy ma- dust. magic yeah it's magic yeah. it's yeah, it's 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 to trick trick people it's it's very old it's what vampires use to glamour mm-hmm. yes yeah. glamour spell, yeah. yeah and then uh he brought up alien abductions. Uh, Ooh, we need to oh, every, every, yeah, every, uh, you know, they always associate with wilderness. Um, and oh, and that I was just talking about the god, it's called the goblin universe, which is that alternate dimension. Oh, you know what he also brought up? I have was um, Anunnaki. And like, and with the gods oh, yeah, and relations, and that's when it started hitting me with this crazy blast of the past of the, that screen memory shit. You know, like that that's everything when it, is demons. Yeah, it, it's all demons. So that was super dope. That guy's talk was really cool. And I know, I know, um, Ren and um, Grim got into a couple that that you got into one in that morning, dude. Um, oh, with the Ouija boards. Uh, the Ouija one. So yeah. tell me about that one. I didn't Robert miss Merch. Yeah, Robert Merch. It wasn't bad. He just went throughout like he's worked on like uh he worked on those Ouija movies, those crappy Ouija movies that came out. And uh <laughs> and he was That's not his claim to fame though. No, it isn't. But he's got like he owns- he's like the largest collection of talking boards 
that uh, he has a museum full of them yeah yeah he's got tons of them like an insane amount and he just collects them and he just went through the history of those and how uh basically they originated see i didn't take notes so i'm going off of like my hungover memory right now but they that's why i took notes yeah they uh they came about in the late 1800s and it was something that like you needed it kind of they kind of got popularized because like you know a man and a woman could use them together and like being in the same room together weren't uh it was like taboo and like there's all this taboo shit and that's kind of like why it got labeled as such a bad thing but i don't know man there's a bunch of shit though like milton bradley basically just capitalized on it and put out a bunch of bullshit uh recently uh we had a garage sale here and uh it was a combo between my wife and her sister and she had a ouija board um in the in the original package and they left it in our back sunroom and then the garage sale ended and it was sitting back there for like a month or two and i kept telling my wife i'm like get rid of that thing it scares you I don't want that thing in the house just floating around. It scares you. It, it's just it a portal sitting on your back porch. <laughs> yeah. You never know. And, uh, they, they, they eventually, they eventually got it. Took it back, took it I mean, away. They go back pretty far. Like, uh, I don't think they go back to the Victorian era, but shortly after it was a big part of the spiritualism, spiritualist movement. I think mm-hmm. in the late 1800s and, you know, as such, it got demonized quote unquote by the religious theme mm. like What's everything the, like uh, etymology of a uh, ouija it's, it's yes yes in french and german yes we, yes we yeah uh, we yeah is what it's spelled o-u-i uh, which is yeah. yes or we in french and ya yeah, which is yes in german j-a huh interesting mm. the more you know plan chats ah. yeah well but- in the morning, and, but dude, what's, <laughs> I, I, I was I was sitting next to Ren during that one, and like, and, and while he while the, the entire speech, <laughs> Ren's sitting there, he's like drawing his own version of a talking board with like all this old Hebrew and like Solomonic <laughs> shit in it, and I'm just like Jesus, like, dude, Ren's, dude, he's doing banishing rituals out in the out in the rain. Yes, uh-huh. yes, he was. Us, so. Yes, he was. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. The oh, one that, guy that was... had on a, on his uh like pamphlet, he had it had a sigil on the bottom of it and he spent yeah, dude, like Greg an hour and Dana just it down, dude. Yeah, yeah but... because we went uh uh we went to the booths first and he picked that page off Greg and Data Newkirk. Like we, we talked to him for a minute and then we went to uh Cliff Berrickman's talk, he's from Finding Bigfoot, I think. And he's just sitting there and I see him scribbling like crazy and he's got his phone open, like not even paying attention, just trying to decode this sigil that they have on their thing. And then like he went up and confronted him about it and Dana was like real vague with him. <laughs> she, she wouldn't give it out. Yeah, man. I was just like, thinking out with the Ouija boards, do they make like a tablet uh, or an iPad app for <laughs> an Ouija app? Is her yes, app for there are thousands. So you can go, to, go, you can go to the okay. Talking Board Museum website. Have you ever a f- board, t- museum of talking boards.com? <clears throat> yep, ah, yeah. there you go. That's purchase site, and they have a digital Ouija board. There. There's board. also a fun thing you can do on Google just type in like world's largest Ouija board, it's some pretty crazy stuff. You'll see. <laughs> do you have to like have a touch screen capabilities, or can you do it with uh, like your mouse? You do it with your mouse, you just you drive, the, drive the plant shot with your mouse. <laughs> Crazy. So, man, yeah, that I mean, yeah, so dude. any other panels? I know, I think yeah. we were all in the uh Travis Walton. Well, I was just gonna say, yeah. I was like, I can, I can go yeah. over that now, you know, before the, the break. Yeah, <laughs> if man. we have a break, do we have a break? Do we have a break? I don't know. No, I'm sure we can go. jam. Right, you, should tell, you should tell the story, and then we'll talk about the after party with Travis. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay. All right, so Travis Walton, which was. M- I, man, it, it's a toss up. I don't know if I liked him or, the best or Polite's the best. I, I mean, just because well, Travis, hands down, such a cool dude to talk to and yeah. approachable. And I mean, that dude, and, you could you, you could just go and grab a steak dinner with that guy in a minute. And how about it? He had the coolest <laughs> hair. He did. He oh, totally did. I love that guy. <laughs> His hair was maroon, but it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like your your kids spray paint 
his head maroon. And, Just uh, for men. Yeah. Dude. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, so let's see. He explained, let's see. Travis Walton explained. Dude, I believe the, him. The backstory and the differences, fr- differences from the, f- the film to the truth uh, and how it relates to the t- oh, oh he relates the title uh, "Fire in the Sky" from lightning strikes and trees burning, from from the jobs they were doing, like uh, you know, and uh, you know they were log cutters and shit. And so when lightning would hit these trees, they would light up like a motherfucker, man. Yeah. Is that, and the, uh, is that Mr. Oh, Anderson? No is that Mr. Anderson that just joined us? Mr. Yeah, yeah. Out of Bank of America. <laughs> Yay. Or sheep. Uh, I think, I think oh, he's figuring shit. it out. Keep going, Bill. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we'll let Bill get situated here, and then uh, I think he's masturbating with two fingers. He Something's could be doing a two finger jerk. <laughs> so he so he was relating like how they came up with the title of the fire in the sky, um, <clears throat> and then uh, the UFO researcher. Huh. Was he who's who was this trans? No, he, trans- he was, well, no, he was telling like he how he like, came up. He was abducted. It was, it was uh, yeah. he's, he's, he's yeah, telling man, he from had, his like, perspective. The, uh, the movie Fire in the Sky was based on his story. He got abducted. Talking about the movie, a, yeah, like a lot of it was relation to the movie and the differences between real what really happened and the movie. Shout and out! He ended up talking about the title Fire in the Sky. Shout out to Bushi Bantan in the chats right now. The only one who's listening and interacting. We have chats. <laughs> it's it's the Great America chats. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? Everybody uh, out there? Yeah, we are streaming live right now uh, on uh, grimerica.ca slash fm. I so, put the link up on Twitter. I found Thank it interesting. Thanks, like, yeah. He see, this is why I believe his story because he goes into details like what it was like to be hit by that, that by the beam of light. So he described it as being like shocked. Like yeah, electrically shocked. Now, I've, I was an electrical engineer in the Air Force, so I've been shocked before. Um, so it's kind of it's weird because, like, depending on the voltage, the amperage, and stuff, sometimes when you get hit, you can't let go; you get paralyzed. So it's sort of like the same feeling he had when he was kind of brought up into the into the aircraft. Into, yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, because it's electrical impulses that make your muscles contract and expand. So if the if it's of a certain frequency, if the if there's enough voltage in it, which which makes sense because when he was when he described like when he was in the ship, he felt uh, extremely injured. Like he said, he felt like shit. Like he felt like he's been. Oh yeah, he was fucked know. up. Blurry vision. Yeah. So oh. that, would be, that those are all attributes of being electrically, you know, shocked. And typically, that's that, that kind of relates to like high voltage, mm-hmm. because I, I say high voltage because if it was high amperage, typically when you get hit with really really high amps, you're going to die, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. The movie, the movie right up here says uh, what took place in Snowflake, Arizona, 1975. Uh, yeah, thanks, Felix. Yeah, good his, job. His friends uh, got accused of of murdering him. Travis murdering yep. Travis. Yeah, Long, he disappeared. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll say uh actually you talk you brought up his friends and the one one of his friends a crew member this Kenny Peterson he refused to be in the film like his portrayal and everything like he did not want to be like involved in this whole situation at all and but he did get some play like there was like a guy in the film that they related his his like demeanor and stuff as but uh he 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 was saying that he used to go uh, back to the camp at that site, at that UFO site, and uh, he, he and basically he Travis was saying he built like his own religion around like you know around this event because it was so you know, so much of a profound uh, experience, I, I, personal religion. Like it was like his thing. And, like he just kept going back there and back there, and I, I think over time. Like he was saying, he's like one the one, one dude that like just it fucked him up mentally, like from seeing what had happened. <clears throat> and then uh, let's see what else he do. He explained a lot of how to get you know 
explained a lot on how to, how to get the truth out the right way and how much blowback he, he received from it. Like, like, like Chad, uh, well, Leonidas was just saying like, you know, you know, Oh man, I was, I was hit. And then I was brought up into the shift and shit, you know, like all these people, all the crew members were saying all, all this stuff and they were just getting so much, you know, like, no way you guys killed this guy. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. So it was just really sprawled out, man. It, 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 it the, the blowback wise. I mean, the, I don't know if he got into details, like in the, in the actual uh, case, mm-hmm. um, when they took the, I, I'm assuming they, they did a disposition on, on everyone involved, but yeah, their description of the craft and their description of what happened that closely ties in that pretty much everyone matched the same, the same details, of what happened that night. So it's not, something that's completely isolated from one individual person. You have a group of people that experience the same thing. I mean, yeah. And they all took every test possible that, you know, uh, lie detectors, this, that, whatever. And they all passed everything, you know, it's just, so, you know, they, they just, yeah, they received a lot of blowback from telling the truth basically. And then, um, he explained the abduction experience, just like you were just saying before how, Bam! He gets hit by this beam of life, you know, and sucked up in this ship. So some of the things that had happened, he, you know, he explains blurry vision, and when he came to, like, he was all fucked up in this thing, you know, and like, where am I? He was all freaking out. They kept, you know, he. I want to say they. I guess the 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 aliens or whatever. Did he know. come running naked out of the woods and found a payphone? Or well, that was that was the end of it. Or was it the movie? I that don't was, remember now. No, that was the end of it. No, but he experienced blurry vision. First thing he thought of uh, when when he had this blurry vision was, oh, there's, you know, they're doctors. I'm in a like a ER type situation. And then he came to realize that there were three beings, and he was he was terrified beyond belief, and even felt like he was uh, being suffocated. So like in that in the movie they portrayed that as um you know just saying being suffocated it you know isn't as cool as what they did in the movie which is what they portrayed it as a membrane like covering the dude's face and shit like if you guys have seen the movie there is like you know, there's like a shot of him you know like he's laying on the table and there's like this plastic bag over this dude's face you know can't breathe and shit so that's basically kind of what it, he was trying to portray like, and that's like the air in the, in the place or whatever, something that he couldn't breathe. Uh, but no harm, uh, you know, was done to him like throughout all of this, which was yeah. crazy. Well, he was, he was yeah. very combative. He was very yeah. combative though. Like he fought these, these, uh, yeah. beings, and he described in, you know, there were other beings that came into the, the, uh, the center console room that he was in. Um, and one thing the movie didn't show that he described was there was like star maps in like in the ceiling. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like there's all these star maps around. Um, but when he, be- when he became combative with these, I'm assuming were the, the gray aliens or the, the regular type of aliens. Um, there were other people that came in that were human, like that walked yeah. in Dude, that's an interesting uh, correlation with the Betty and Barney Hill stuff. Like, because they saw star maps too when they yeah. were abducted. And, you know, these, these. That's because they were both abducted by the same military unit. And these beings, he said that they, they looked human, but they, they didn't look human. Like, they were just off just a little bit. Like, their eyes were weird. Um, I mean, I don't know if that, if that depicts like the, um, the Nordics. Well, that was later, right? Yeah, because well, he was explaining these different races that that ended up because they at first he he saw like the the typical little green men thing, the gray alien, and then they were they brought him into this uh this hangar, based, ah. you know, like this huge hangar thing, and there was like three to four craft there. Oh, right, here, let me. That, I'm skipping ahead. Okay, Bill, so, Bill, Bill, what did you think of the Travis Walton talk? I thought it was great. And it was great hearing him. You guys hear me? <laughs> you barely, man. Barely. barely. No. Are you in a hangar? 
He I might be in a hangar right Why now. Why are you in here twice? What the <laughs> fuck? The other, the other one's lagged out. <laughs> it happens Just sometimes. Just a little. But, uh, you know, we've all heard that story many times, but hearing actually do it in person was fantastic. Absolutely. I got a fun side fact for you guys. <laughs> side fact about Travis Walton? Sure. Side fact about Fire in the Sky, the movie. Okay. So uh, one of the co-workers in the movie, the actor who plays um, one of Travis Walton's co- co-workers, the actor's uh, name is um, Robert Patrick. Robert and, Patrick is a Terminator. Yep, yeah, Terminator. And he's uh, uh, also on the X-Files. He's Agent Doggett. Right. Chris, Car- uh, Chris Carter really liked his uh, portrayal of the friend and um, or the co-worker in Fire in the Sky that he he let him be uh, in the X-Files. Oh, uh. Oh, nice. That's very sweet. Dog it. I didn't really like those last few seasons. I didn't really like that character. He kind of he, he kind of grew on me after a while, but oh, uh, he was uh oh what the that uh, was the werewolf first werewolf guy in True Blood. It was he played that guy's dad. Uh, oh, you're right. He had a French name, something Vandelay or something like that. Vandalay. <laughs> I, I don't remember what it was. But. Seinfeld. I will look uh, it up, but it's probably, you know. Uh, well, didn't re- he get, uh, uh, Travis, uh, didn't he get regressed, like, regression? Uh, I don't know. Did, didn't he mention? I don't I'm know. sure he did, and we all know how accurate that yeah, was. Yeah, uh-huh. exactly. Man. Well, I mean, he seemed pretty it's like it, it, you, machine. it's it's different when you listen to someone like over the radio or they're talking, but when yeah. you're watching someone in person, like their mannerisms, he's describing and, yeah. he's describing the situation and he gets worked up, like he starts tearing up because he's talking about his brother and how his brother's literally oh, saying his life his rock. Yeah, yeah. still, still, and um, still getting worked up. What do you mean? Well, his Wait, brother like, died years ago. Uh, Give it up. I know, I know. Yeah. I should shut up. Yeah, his brother died. So I, I think, know, but yeah. it was you. You would think over time, telling the story week after week, yeah. you wouldn't cry about it anymore. Maybe it's part it just of depends the, on uh, how traumatic it is. I mean, yeah. if you ever been through like a really traumatic event, I oh. mean, it just depends. Like sometimes you can't get over that shit. Yeah, he got a little emotional. It was nice. It it, it, it humanized just him. So mentally unhealthy to, to constantly confront it and cry about it. Psychologically unhealthy. You know, like I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he's well medicated. I like to do. Don't get me wrong. I'm just, <laughs> yeah, it's well just met. strange to me to see someone repeat the story over and over and and continually get moved by it. I've never seen that happen really to anyone else. Time to time, sure, but yeah. Thirty years later. <laughs> Thirty years <laughs> exactly. later. <laughs> Fifty yeah. years later. Yeah. Uh, he did get, when I was hanging out with him that last night, Sunday. He. Is a huge MMA fan. Apparently, he's buddies with Chuck Liddell, and he was, you know, he's up on current happenings there, and <laughs> talked to him for like half an hour about, you know, MMA. Holy uh, shit! Yeah. Man, yeah, because Bill Bill stayed the the, the that that yeah, night also, right? Night. Yeah, yeah. Extra, extra night paid off, baby. Uh-huh. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. Man. Um. Dude, how about all, all that? Right. S- the storms, just dude, constant dude. rain the entire time. Oh. <laughs> it's still raining here, dude. So Bill and I were outside. Uh, and yeah. we're, oh, so we're, outside we're outside, and the, we uh, the storms were coming at us from, I suppose that was what the west, right? Going east from the west, and we're watching the lightning, really strong lightning and loud thunder going out. Oh, and it gets fat, closer and closer and closer, and then some. Lady runs out. <laughs> oh my God! Look at the lightning! It's so awesome! I'm from California. It never happens. To- she wouldn't <laughs> shut up. She was drunk as fuck. <laughs> then her mom comes out after uh, her going, "Get in here! Get in here!" <laughs> it was hilarious. She's anyway. So Bill and I kind of like scooted away from that, and plus there was the rain was coming down the sheet. I don't remember exactly what it started raining. So then. We almost got hit by lightning. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I think it hit the canopy we were under. Mm-hmm. Because our ears started, my ears started to crackle. And then it, there was like this just weird 
something going on and we kind of like leaned away naturally what uh, bill you got to talk into that mic dude get closer to that you get need close to, to that document the story yeah i'm back on my phone tablet wasn't working with zoom but there was a put your mouth next to the phone it will yeah talk to it, it like you're talking on the phone <laughs> sorry okay. guys Make that phone. You're bitch. like you're talking make love to that phone carry on I, we didn't hear you. Sorry. <laughs> Carry on. Sorry, Bill. <laughs> no, I'm just saying the odd sound of the lightning strike so close was like a sizzling, zapping sound there. Yeah, that's insane. Nothing I ever heard from Jesus. My life. Because I do, I, I, I remember, remember that. I, I remember was, you guys. I've already went. Was one night was that Saturday night or? Yeah, yeah, that was Saturday night. Saturday night. night. Yeah. yeah, it was like kind of, yeah, kind of yeah, like, because I just remember you guys coming in saying, "We just almost got fucking hit by lightning or something." And it was like, "What?" Dude. Yeah. Oh Jesus! Nice, good, good job, James, coming through with the board. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Saturday night was great. So <laughs> hell <drunk>. yeah! <laughs> so fucking uh, drunk. So it's about like four. Yeah, dude, it was it late. It was late night, dude. Yeah, yeah. it was like yeah. It was a late one, but it was a good one. Uh, yeah. So let's see. I go back. Let's see back to here. His original. Th- okay. Well, yeah, back so to Travis Walton. Off had no harm was done to him. So his original thought it was an abduction, but then he thought it was something different, like treatment or sampled or studied. Um, he talks about an EEG test. At the one of the after you know this this all had happened, he got this EEG testing, and it's the same hospital that like Muhammad Ali, you know his his treatment was at you know, uh, and uh, interesting factoid: uh, Muhammad Ali is very into ufology as well. He he's dead. I, so is Travis's brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he he experienced a chair where he was trapped and he couldn't get out yeah he was trapped down and and then uh then they started pressing yeah then he started pressing a ton of buttons and shit to get out thinking you know thinking that he would like break free and like he was still thinking he's in this craft when he could just jump out and he's like 15 feet off the ground or something you know or you know he's Cause he, you know, obviously he felt he got sucked up and then he's only, he's thinking he's still in the same place. <clears throat> so then, uh, then a humanoid, yeah. Then a humanoid, uh, you know, which would probably be what you were just talking about a little bit ago, Leonidas, like the, the, what would you say? The Nordic, you know, type looking person, mm-hmm. you know, like, cause at first it was the grays and then they just thinking, well, maybe, this guy might calm down and set a little green men chasing him. Uh, maybe, you know, a dude and a blonde, you know, and this chick, you know, uh, you know, might, he might, you know, be a little less. I mean, yeah, it could have been, it could have been an actual, uh, different race or, or it could have been an actual projection to calm him down. Right. You know, during that, during that part. So when then, when they came in, he thought, Oh shit, you know, a, a rescuer, you know, he thought a rescuer. And then, so this new experience, and random humanoid, they take him through a large hangar with three to four circular aircraft. Um, you, they, you know, they they lead Travis to a room, and and then and let's see, he got pissed and threw down with them. He basically got into this huge fight with them all, and they imagine he he managed to get a. They managed you know, like the, the the beans managed to get like a basically like a respirator. They managed to get like a mask on him, and and that rendered him unconscious. Uh, yeah. once he, he then basically that was it, man. Once he woke up again, he was back on the side of the road. He looked up. There was a light, and then it took off. Poof, gone. And uh, then he went to that phone booth, and he made the call. And now you uh, never have to listen to a Travis Walton lecture because we just told his story. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he made the, yeah, and then uh, even uh, skeptics say that he had never made the call, but an operator from the phone company back then, you know, you know, he, he 
they the lady actually it was a a, fem, a woman and she listened in on the call and he and she heard all of it. And well, I think one of the arguments was that how would he have any change to make a phone call and and it's pretty obvious he he's made a collect call to his family. Yeah. See back then and like today people yes. remember their phone numbers. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's like today too. people don't remember anything. <laughs> Dude, I I still remember phone numbers of like old high school friends and uh Who would you call? Oh, yeah, who me would too. the number you would call? Yeah. <laughs> dude, uh, uh my yeah, dude, I, yeah, I'm not going to I don't, I don't even know. Numbers. I'm trying to think like the, yeah, the dude, phone I number. I got me be my wife. I know their number. I was looking into that werewolf dude from True Blood. Oh. Oh yeah. His, okay. his name is Alcide. Was the guy's name his character name? But the dude, mm-hmm. the, the actor's name is Joe Man Manji. Man- oh yeah, dude, he's a huge D and D player. He loves D&D. exactly. Yes. I was just gonna tell you that he he loves going on some celebrity D and D and critical role and shit. Yeah, he's got this he whole brand going on Twitter. Show. No, probably not. But maybe we could, I'd talk yeah. werewolves with him. <laughs> it doesn't look like he's doing much, so. <laughs> You might not have to. Well, we also we we uh, took a little trip into town. Oh, we did. Oh yeah. And we found a little hidden gem. Uh, yeah, man. That old library. Hard. I wish we had more than fifteen minutes to look through it. <laughs> like that was yeah. I could I could have <laughs> looked through that thing for forever. That's because we stood in front of me Fiesta, hitting off that vape pipe. Oh, that nine. thing was great. <laughs> Fucking shouts out to Nikki the dude. <laughs> Man. But yeah, if you uh, want to see good. pictures of what we're talking about, the library, just go to Cruising with Snake on Facebook and you should see the pictures posted there. Yeah. Oh, there's some. You actually see there? a picture of Graham actually selecting a book to read from the library. Which he left there. J- James yeah, James is uh yeah, I totally left it there. I can't read. Wait, it wasn't James a library, is- it was a bookstore. Yeah, it was a book. Yeah, so uh, books I, it's a bookstore, but I think originally it was no. a library. No, they uh, got some sure? books. They got the, the, all the books upstairs. She told me were from estate sales or donations, or things they purchased in a lot, or vice versa. Some of those books are a, a old library books. Oh, uh, okay, dude. I got was... one. I bought one. I got oh. two. I got one of, um, I think, a thick book from the seventies on all the um, western ghost towns. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. And then another book on time, dude. It's uh, yeah, dude. Those, because like they had the, uh, it was like an Encyclopedia Britannica from like uh, the late eighteen hundreds. It was like eighteen ninety something, and like I picked one of them up and started flipping. And it just felt like it was gonna fall apart in my hands, and I was like, I gotta put this back on the shelf. <laughs> that's just how books feel. <laughs> they're all, they're just they're not solid like your iPhone. <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> no, I mean the binding. <laughs> what is this thing that's flipping? I don't get it. <laughs> well, on the way up to to there on Friday when I was driving, I listened to um, that Charlotte Iserbite interview on THC. I haven't listened. She was talking about the education system and how it's fucked. Yeah, pretty much. Basically, yeah. it's been fucked from the beginning, and it's mm-hmm. all been you know, you know, you know. But one of her advocates was this guy, George Hansen, who she was talking about and how he put out, he wrote this book and then was found dead a year later or a day later. You know how that goes too. Mm-hmm. And the first book I found when I walked upstairs into the library was a book by this guy, George Hansen. What? Yeah. So I had to buy it. And then I found a book on Yates who was in another podcast or something I just read. So I had to buy that too. They're like two in a row. Ding, ding. Man. Yeah. And yeah, I offered that's... to, I left them with my card and I offered to come back and organize the entire upstairs. Oh, did you really? <laughs> for my awesome. choice of books, yes. <laughs> that is awesome. Dude, because, yeah, it is. It's a disaster. Like, there's no organization at all. It, it's not a disaster. It's just unorganized piles yeah. of books. Yeah. And I love how the floor was creaky. Dude, it was. It just had Leo. You got to film a horror movie up there, man. <laughs> I'm going to. I got her. I got the uh, their contents information. So that's definitely a, a possible um, shot location for upcoming film. You can make a film about this weirdo who offers to organize all the books up there and then experiences paranormal things while he's doing it. Oh, nice! Oh man, there we go. That's a good idea. 
<laughs> Road trip. Just make sure we'll book at the same time I'm up there. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. That's actually a good idea. I like that. Yeah. Well, there's speakers that we see. Because there's nobody up there. I mean, Contrary we were like people up there, and I think she said that nobody usually goes up there anyway. It was like Saturday at 6 o'clock. Or 8 o'clock. It was later than that. Yeah, I know. No one goes up there. It's scary up there. You have to yeah. use your head, you know, to think <laughs> and read. And there's no section markers. Yeah, man. I uh, I walked to that uh, coffee shop. Oh, Bill's got an Oxmente card. He's still rocking it. Dude, I kept finding right them in my bag and like in my pockets and stuff when I got home. I was like, Oxmente cards. I brought, I brought, he got taken there. He had about, I don't know, a few hundred floating out there. No, I did not. I had less than less than a hundred total that I brought with me. It was a nice good stack, though. Well, well, maybe I did take that big stack. I don't recall. However, oh, that was a nice stack. You are correct. It was about fifty or sixty. Are you talking about the one that you left on the table, or did yes. did you? Yes. <laughs> it's awesome. Strategically placed. Not QR really. codes. I gave them out to everyone I passed by. You ever go to? You guys ever been to Vegas? Nope. Yes. You know, they got those guys in the street who take business cards and flick Flicker, them. In the, yeah. Yeah. They, annoying. They, yes. They make these weird noises and make you look <laughs> at them. <laughs> the noise they make makes you look at their hands and then they hand you. Uh, so it's many like, great times in Vegas. That's an yeah. entire podcast itself. You know, in Mexico, when little kids run around trying to sell you chiclets, go chiclet, chiclet. Like, and they won't leave you alone. That's what these guys are like with the cards here. And they're like hooker cards or stripper cards or whatever. <laughs> Or, or limos to the uh, whorehouse, the whorehouse. Oy, oy. Welcome back, James. Computer hey, crashes. hey, what's up? Yeah, Made my it. whole PC just crashed, dude. Just was there a cat involved? Nope. Oh, okay. So that lightning incident was quite electric. It's electric. Diggy, 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 it was weird. It was weird. It was I think I, I remember hearing that that thunder. Man, that shit was close. I was like, damn. <laughs> thunder and lightning were were at the same time for me. Like we heard crap, bang, crash, bang, you know, and I was. That's perfect. close. Yeah. Uh, yeah dude, man. I would say, so cool. I would say Cryptid Con was an overall 100% <laughs> successful, great time. Like, like great fucking time. Do you know what that is, dude? Absolutely. Is one in a row. One in a row. Oh, Ooh. by the way, Bill, I still owe you a t-shirt. So send me your address and I'll send it your way. Boom. Oh yeah, man. Woo. And I, I want to thank you for all the, uh, the, the continuous flow of beers, uh, Friday night. <laughs> Bill kept all coming. Fucked up. And I want to thank you for the continuous flow of urine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what goes in must come out. It's very true. Yeah, it was the great. water sewage treatment plants of uh, Frankfort, Kentucky. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Yeah, and I was up early as fuck every day. Nobody uh, nobody else had to wake <laughs> no up. Hey, up. Where are you guys? It's 8.30. <laughs> yeah, dude, 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 I was I'm up, I at like, I I'm up at like 7. I'm up at like 7, 7.30. I walked to that coffee shop. <laughs> I'm just like, Man. You should have like, known. Like, I, I'd wake up every morning and I would see like a text message. It's like, Graham was like, are you awake? Are you live? <laughs> I'm like, dude, it's like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning. I like to sleep in. And, um, she just came, knocked on the door. Yeah. The kids it's are like, probably knock, awake. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Knock, knocked on the door and I would have, I would have gotten up. Yeah. So I, I told her, don't come in here unless your maid service includes a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I'm kidding. Oh, I, I could have totally pictured you saying that to her though. <laughs> That's the best part. <laughs> Don't come in here. I'm smoking weed. <laughs> Allegedly. We do- Allegedly. Yeah, never Make her come in and watch. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't see any maids, actually. No, they were sneaky. I didn't see anyone. I didn't see anyone there, like hotel employees. Well, we got we got the... Uh, I saw her. Yeah, I saw her. We, got, we got the corner section, so that was the pretty good. Sack. The cul-de-sac of the third floor. Yep. yep. Bunch of threes. Bunch of threes. Yeah, there were a lot of threes. Three, three, three. Third oh. floor. Uh, and uh, we're, haunted. we're haunted with threes, man. There was a split second when 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 Grimstick's mind was completely blown. Some random dude came on the elevator, and he he 
he screwed us up because what was it, Graham? Remember that? Wait. Oh yeah, he's like, <laughs> which side did you come out on? Um, because, dude, we went up. We went up on like it was. It was fucked up. On the on the second floor, there's there's two. Ele- there's an elevator door on either side, front and back. Yeah. And the back opens on the service. Well, levels. yeah, because there's there's like apartments and shit in there too. Like on the higher floors, people live there. Why? I, I don't know. Hotel living, I guess. You know, in a hotel. Dude, it's creepy. I yeah, was it? talking to my father-in-law about the hotel today. And he swears that he saw that on Hotel Impossible, where like they they go in and like redo these places and stuff. You know, these hotels. And uh, and he's like, "Don't do they have like condos or something there?" I'm like, "Actually, yeah, they do. <laughs> they're like on the top floor. So I guess they're like converting them slowly, like in the." Yeah, because if you looked it went in the uh, merch room, like there was pictures of that hotel and it had a whole nother section that was like 40 floors, dude. It was huge. Oh, shit. And, uh, and and behind the building, I'm like, I saw like a bunch of steel girt, like like it looked like they were building some, but no, they were tearing it down is what they did. They tore down the whole other section because there ain't shit going on there. <laughs> there is a cute little town. So uh, they've already renamed it. It's this, this a cute little town. <laughs> it's it's it. Wait, it is Frankfurt. It's this cute little street. <laughs> they've renamed it and gave it a swanky name, right? Yeah. They're upgrading it to match the name, so it's the Capitol it's, Plaza. It's, yeah. Maybe. I mean, I, I didn't have any problems. Pillows. No, the building, it, it, the hotel was fun. It was cool. Like yeah, they did some cool. stuff, and to you know, but it it had a mix of like. 90s and then but like with an updated you know eating areas and stuff well, i can tell you like it was all cool. the conventions all the conferences i've been to i was very impressed uh-huh yeah this this convention was it was ran very smoothly everyone was friendly yep there's only i think there was only one guest that canceled which is, is uh, bob Kimlin. which yeah which is pretty good because typically you'll have quite a few people uh cancel uh depending on the convention so we didn't we had, want to him anyway they had everyone they said there was going to be there. Uh, the vendor section was great. The food was pretty good. Um, the hotel staff was very friendly. So, yeah, it was, it was pretty awesome. Definitely next year, if anyone decides to go, which they're debating on either Louisville or Lexington, which I ho- I'm hoping it's Louisville because I'm Louisville. super close to Louisville. Or Nashville would be nice. Um, if you want to go, definitely, I think it's worth going, checking yes. out. Wait, is Louisville? Oh, that's a bite. It's farther for me to go there. No way I won't. Oh, yeah, it is further for you. I was thinking it was. That's right. <laughs> it's a little yeah, further. I get, I get the cities in Tennessee and Kentucky mixed up all the time. Because they, they touch. So. They do. Just the tips. Cities so we have to dedicate tips. the rest of the show to MJ? No. You guys you really to? T- talked about her. How crazy that crazy <laughs> chick. That crazy you chick? Know. MJ, yeah. dude, she got me drunk as fuck. Yeah, with that fucking shooter, and then she the had a talk on um, South African cryptids, right? Yeah, South African cryptids. And she was outside. She's a smoker, and she was pretty interesting, telling us ghost stories and shit. Showing us a picture of a ghost she took a picture of. Oh or had yeah, caught in a reflection. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Oh, dude, that was. Legit, that was crazy. I creeped out my little cousins. They were scared yeah. the rest of the night. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, that was fucking. That was wild. Yeah. Yarp. Yarp. Was anybody and there? She's when, from, uh, uh, there was Taco and Joe. Taco and Joe. They were great Ooh, dudes. Really solid dudes. <laughs> Just they hung out. Wait, who? Oh. The t-shirt the, the, guys, yeah, the t-shirt vendors. Oh, are, are they are they the ones that ran up and t- was like blasting this? Um, they got dropped off by the chef or something like that. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And they were just like, "Oh man, this burger was so juicy and amazing, and yeah. I'm Latino and it was spicy." And yeah, yes. these guys are great. And we were bitching about our shitty meal, and they're yeah. <laughs> the ones the downtown kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> but let me tell you about our meal. Yeah, he was pretty funny. Yeah, those are good. They had a t shirt shop and their cards in my wallet, which is in my car. I'm not going to go get it. Hang a couple shirts from them. Especially an app or something printing fast, custom printing.net. 
<laughs> there was a. Uh, was anybody there when the two uh, drunken middle-aged women were talking to Ren and like getting really upset with him because he's telling them how he invokes demons and they're the like short blonde and the uh, yes tall yes. Black. That was the woman who came out screaming about, I never get lightning. I live in California. Her oh, mom came out. <laughs> no, I missed that. I wish I was there. What happened? Those are the two. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah Ren, Ren, Ren was like talking like, no, no, go, like just going on about how, you know, he did, he works with spirits and has them do things and stuff. And they're like, no, we go into houses and we like bless them to get rid of them. And then like, it was just this long back and forth. Like, it was oh, hilarious. I wish I was there. I'm going <laughs> to... Yeah. <laughs> when you, but sometimes when you bless houses like that, you're bringing more demons in. Yeah, could be. You never well, know. especially with sage, but yeah, I mean, yeah, you can if you don't do it right. Well, so uh, good times. I loved using the pious. That was good. either way. Like it, it was it was a blast. It was fun. I have a factoid. Let's hear it. What's up? I didn't poop the whole time. Really? You know, I was there. I don't think I did either. Uh, I don't know why. I just never had to. When I got home, I'm thinking about it. It hasn't been like since Thursday. Even That's after good. the Mexican restaurant? Even after the Mexican restaurant. Uh, Leo's, I, I can see his, his brain's just, <laughs> his brain's not processing all this. Wait a minute. <laughs> I, I only had three. I had just tacos. I didn't have anything else. That's why I avoided the Mexican restaurant. Bill, <laughs> not getting, not taking the punishment. <laughs> <laughs> the stomach man. issues weren't bad it was just a horrible food it was like there was a, a skinhead and an indian hindu guy running the joint I couldn't well, that chick, she, was, she was pretty hot was it a girl <laughs> oh yeah dude i would i would have done it but she had like meth meth pock marks eh, whatever those sometimes. are <laughs> you just look past them <laughs> that's cool <laughs> sorry not very picky jer no no nah, she was kind of cute kind of she had a, in a pinch in a pinch she had a nice smile and she had all her teeth so she's she not a meth head that was my I, first I'm, judgment I'm, she, <laughs> i think she was just 16 with the acne that could have been <laughs> I, know, I know that doesn't bother I'm you i'm pretty sure legal age of consent is like 12 in kentucky so it's no problem <laughs> it's uh it's 16 in jersey uh, it's not it's 16 in indiana <laughs> 16 in jersey new jersey <laughs> unfortunately it's 16 in a lot of states. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Oh, Isn't that kind of weird? Old enough to bleed, old enough to breed. Okay. I mean, that's... I it's, no, I don't, sci- I don't know. But that's, sci- that's, scientifically, that's a fact, but morally, that's the problem. What's immoral about two people who love each other having sex? If, I true. guess if one of the guys is 80 and the other one's 16, yeah, it's a problem. But if yeah. like 18, 16, 20... 20 well, 18, 16 is no problem. I did that... Like like a few times, so that's yeah. Not a well, problem. that's considered statutory rape in many states. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Which is part anyways, of the reason why I know the statutory rape laws in Indiana. Any, anyways, it was a great time, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and there was no statutory rape. No, if everything uh, was consensual, only non-consensual rape. Grim Sake's a if, good man. If I had to give, if I had to give this event <laughs> um, a rating out of ten, I would definitely give it a ten. It was oh, awesome. Totally, totally. I don't think really anything went wrong the entire time, other than some dude passing out halfway through David Blight's speech. I think next year we need to get a booth and stream from it. Live stream the whole Yeah? Yeah. Well, I mean, I was wanting to do a podcast, but we didn't get around to it. And plus, you, you brought the Illuminati game we never played either. So I, I, You guys all got drunk and everyone went different ways. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> what all good. I'm not, I don't care. It's cool. We're going <laughs> to... Next time, that's the way I see it. There was fun being Good had. times has no schedule, according to Grim. It's just uh, go <laughs> with the flow. It, that's exactly <laughs> it. That that was my mantra. <laughs> Except when it's on the CW, like every night at five thirty. Good times, you know. Ah, uh, is that still on? <laughs> syndication? I don't know. This, is our rerun still a thing? I don't know. They they gotta be rerun. TV? No, I haven't watched TV. I'm, like sat down and watched a real channel in five or six years. So I don't know. Well, yeah. Nothing's for sale. Oh, just a, just a booth where we're not selling anything. Just yelling at people. <laughs> no, no. What you do is we you sell it on eBay. No, you get you bring magnets and you bring chotskis and sell that shit. 
what we do. I have a booth with a microphone and everything. And like, you guys, you, know, you heard James and I heard. I talked to Joe about this about printing T-shirts for us because he could do them for cheap. Uh huh. What we need to do is get into the con so, game. We need to get uh, our own convention going. Oh, if we did that, I was like, I've I already got be people traveling about- all over the country going to conventions. I can. <laughs> I've already been, I've talked to a few people about that. I talked to Brandon Young and I were talking about doing that. Oh man. Together a convention of like solid people, you know, yeah. who would talk about cool things and there's not this hour and a half time limit and it's, it's going to be looser than that. And there's not yeah. two tracks with opposing people on it. So you, you can't see this guy because there's some other asshole talking, you know? Right. Right. So I know we, we, we talked about it in front of Walter Bosley and he seemed to like that idea. So like, he'd be someone we'd want to bring on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Him, yeah. I could see him doing it. Mm-hmm. I don't sweet. know who else. It depends on what we, you know, you want to do UFOs. I could see cruising with state doing it. You'd have to, uh, yeah, <laughs> you'd, you'd want to get a name that people know just to attract crowds, just to bring people in. And then maybe just like have, uh, you know, like if you could land like a Von Daniken or something, like bring him in. But, but, we, yeah. <laughs> but that's not that's the old school UFO convention stuff for me right no this oh, it convention totally is, is going to be more consciousness alien right. kind. well that's kind of what the know. paradigm symposium did uh, back when uh, Scotty Roberts and Micah Hanks did that uh, did those what uh, happened to it uh, I guess a lot of shit went down that I don't, <laughs> a lot of shouldn't stuff. probably talk about on air but, okay well it, it fell apart yeah it fell apart because yeah. of corruption. Oh, yeah, right. I, I'm not going to let that happen if I get involved for sure. Oh, no. But, but um, yeah, I don't it's know. All about I, the boots. It's something I want to do. I would totally love to do that. Sell that booth if space. Not, um, definitely get a booth for us. Yeah. Or uh, I had another thought go. I think I forgot what it was. I wonder how much it would be to rent out one of those booths. The biggest challenge, like with with thousand, thousand bucks, the biggest challenge with venues is, and you know, I used to run a, a large um, gaming convention in Colorado. Um, like if you're going through hotels and stuff, your your price to rent out their ballroom convention areas, their their ballrooms and stuff, is tied into how many rooms you sell there. So, like. For instance, if you bring people in and X amount of rooms are sold, then you get this this price discounted, and so on. So, um, and it just depends on like some some conventions, some hotels are were really really shitty. Like I would never ever go there again. Um, <laughs> and that's the biggest challenge. If you go like expo centers, you're going to be paying a lot more there too. Because you got to pay teamsters. Yeah, and one thing, one problem we ran into was, um, and like I said, it just depends on what you're doing, but we were trying to have pizza there for all the gamers, and we had, we were kind of restricted because we had to get, we had to use the food that the Expo Center sold. No outside food or drink, please. But we worked around that. We made a deal with them, so. (laughs) Man. And you know what? Actually, we should have it. If we're really going to have it, we should have it at the Stanley Hotel. Oh, wait, what's, which one is that? Yeah, what's the Stanley Hotel? Oh, the one in Minnesota? That's in Colorado. Oh. That's the one that... Oh, uh, oh the mm. Overlook. Y- yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. The faux Overlook. It's, it's it, the real... one that inspired Steve, uh, Stephen King's novel. But that's the hotel they filmed or modeled the sets off of, right? No, not the original movie. What, what hotel was that? That's where we should stay. That was in Oregon. I wonder. That would be creepy be to rent that. I mean, yeah, that one. That one was pretty creepy too. But none of us know what the Stanley Hotel looks like. Nah. Um, <clears throat> remember the uh, the the Shining TV series back in the nineties? With um, the dude from Wings. Yes. Yeah. That one was shot at the Stanley Hotel. Okay, it was a much smaller hotel. Yeah. It's a four-star hotel. It's address, no shit. Fuck. It's address 333 East Wonder View Whoa. <laughs> Avenue in Estes Park. Jesus Christ. Yep. Three's company. 
Uh, I went there. They have like ghost tours. I went there one time and um, they take you through the house and tell you all the history. Now I believe the, the, there's a, there's a place in the hotel uh, where they have the bar that I think they filmed um, one part of the movie for the shining in that particular spot. Um, I think it was a scene with when Jack Nicholson was at the bar with Grady. Grady talking to him. Corrected his family. Yeah, the rest was filmed in, I think, um, I think it was in Oregon. It was some uh, hotel. Well, it's 400 bucks a night. 400? Yeah, 360. And by the way, they don't have AC. <laughs> But it's a oh, color. You don't need to see this as part. Well, I'm saying, like, you go in the summertime, the rooms are hot as hell. So, really? Yep. It's cold there at night. Even in the summer. I've been there in the July. I've been in July and August, and it's cold. You need a jacket. Uh, it just depends. Because, yeah. I mean, sometimes we have some pretty hot summers. I used to mm-hmm. camp in Or they do. Park. I don't live there no more. Was it Mount Meeker? Mount Meeker's right there? I'm not sure. Hmm. To do a um, little crypto uh, segment, dude. Oh, you want me to play a jingle? Yeah, sure. We, we'll go for, yeah, we got we, we go for another little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what, dude? Actually, uh, well. What, you want a different segment? No, yeah, play that. That's fine. Just trying to remember that that really kick ass site. I don't know what that shit is. I'm not gonna go chase goofy interdimensional ape man. Come on, come on. Cruising, cruising, cruising with stay. Crypto, 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 zoology segmento. Cruising, cruising, cruising with stay. Crypto, 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 zoology segmento. Cruising, cruising, cruising with stay. Crypto, 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 zoology segment. Yeah. I, I skipped the whole crypto zoology phase. Oh, for real? Uh, yeah, you don't believe in monsters? Currency. I don't know what that shit is. I'm not going to go chase goofy interdimensional ape men. Come on. They're obviously interdimensional. Come on. YOLO. Dude, they're just the robots of the greys. Oh, well, I would say the other way around. Yeah. Oh, you think the greys are uh, little robots of the Bigfoot? Probably. Well, Bigfoots are probably projecting Ooh. reptilians into our brains to make us fearful. They're probably our overlords. I would totally believe that. They live in the hollow earth, controlling us from the underground. Totally. I think we just solved the mystery. This whole planet is controlled by Bigfoot. Yeah, and everyone on it is controlled by stupid stories about Hollow Earth and Bigfoot and E.T. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, I love that one. <laughs> Wait, isn't this whole show like a cryptozoology segment? Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's a, well, yeah, why, so we're like in a cryptozoology say, segment within... It's meta. Yeah, just go with it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fractal. It, it is. We're it's fractaling. Fractal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fractard. <laughs> Get it. It's actually a nested uh, segment. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like an egg grown hair, but different. Oh, okay. I got you. Oh, dude. Monsters and military encounters? <laughs> I like that. Speaking uh, of military. You improve now with it, it being September 11th. <sighs> James, we almost <laughs> made it through the whole show without you bringing it up. I was going to hashtag forget this year. Forget this year? Uh, oh. Hashtag never forget. I just forget what? <laughs> hashtag never forget. I hope I stop seeing 911 everywhere now. Because I've been seeing it for like a <laughs> And well, at the end of the week, it started going into 119s. This isn't even 119. a, cri- this isn't even a crypto zoology segment. <laughs> 119 people. Google it. Like in the last two weeks, you'll see all these news reports of 119 people injured, 119 people join this. Thing. 119 clergy are being investigated in Chile for molestation of children. Shit like that. Mm. <laughs> it's crazy. World's a dark place. That's why cruising with stake is your beam of light. <laughs> <laughs> we'll shine through the light. darkness. It's your beacon of hope. Beacon Bind of hope. Of in the night. That's what we do. We give great hugs too. Meet us in person. Cruising with stake. It's like a golden shower. <laughs> it's just like it. 
of light. James, you wanted a cryptozoology have... segment. Did you actually yeah, have something? Here. <laughs> You're killing me sure, here, man. man. You're mm. killing me here. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we got a little Nessie sighting in China. That's not Nessie if it's in China. <laughs> Nessie has Strange to be in Loch Ness. Found in China. It's a, it is a creature that surprised people found in, in a, a village. It seemed to have teeth and is cylindrical in appearance. Like a lamprey? Uh, it sounds like a lamprey. <laughs> like a lamprey, yes. <laughs> it looks like a lamprey. Exactly what it looks like. It's kind of creepy looking, though. It sounds like he just saw a lamprey. This isn't cryptozoology yeah. at all. Yeah, that's kind of lame. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Here, wait. Let's, you let's, have to do your research. Let's see if this one still works. Nope, that one doesn't work. Uh, uh, dude finds... Uh, a that he has a spider spinning a web inside of his ear after visiting a doctor. A creep. How fucked up is that? What did he have in his ear? A spider, spider spinning web in his ear. Guys, I think there it's might be. To, <laughs> you'd say there might be many different up. reasons for having an earache, such as a cold, infection, or too much earwax. However, one man found out the reason he was having trouble with his ear was a spider spinning a web inside of his ear. Yummy. Yeah, the man went to see it. Yeah. Oh, is it that lame? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, here's some Q-tips. Have a nice time. Uh, uh, well, guys. The old trope about people swallowing hundreds of spiders a year in their sleep. I don't think yeah. that's true. <laughs> Well, there was a movie. There's, there's pictures. I don't know about that. <laughs> they do like to bite you in your sleep, though. The there test. Re- I'm sorry, I think we're done. The test revealed that the spider was spinning a web around two inches deep inside the ear of the man. It seems that the man did not find it quite amusing, so he gave his doctor permission to report the finding on social media. Oh, <laughs> the doctor said after performing the. Endosco- endoscopy, uh, endoscopy, whatever, you, however you pronounce endoscopy. it. Endoscopy. There you go. <laughs> because I don't know what that means. And he came across the two spi- bit camera on the end. Yes. <laughs> he came across the spider and it had even spun webs inside the ear of the I got, I got one for you. Okay. All right. He, he sounds what confident. Was he catching like in those webs. That's what I want to know. All right. What do you so got? So this Leo? is a, um, this was reported on uh, September 8th, Saturday. We were actually at Crypticon. Ooh. So teleporting red-eyed wolf. What? Now you're Someone talking. Someone out of Las Vegas, uh, Maryland, out of Las Vegas. Um, this is what she said. I had a serious experience earlier in my life when I was a teenager around 67 or 68. Um, I was getting ready for bed. I was in the bathroom, and all of a sudden, I felt like someone was staring at me. I looked out the window, and there was this black wolf sitting up, just staring up at me. Um, <clears throat> she was asked what color the eyes were, the animal were. She said red. This was big, like a wolf. When I looked out the window, it scared me. I turned the lights off, and I peeked out again, and it was still there. So I went to my bedroom, which had these windows, exposures uh, to the north, to the west and to the south, I peeked out my window to the north, and now the wolf-like thing had changed position. It was now sitting, staring up at me from that window. It scared me, so I went to the west window. Um, out of the front of the house, it changed position. It was sitting in, in my front yard, staring right up at me. Jesus. I don't know. It just kept changing positions. North, south, east, west. It was just all over the place. I've never been so scared before in my life, but I can't help to think that it was, as you described, Linda, she's referring to Linda Godfrey, um, that it was a shape-shifting or from a portal. Man, or a hellhound. So, a hellhound. That's been popping up lately, too. I've been seeing a lot of hellhounds. 
Oh man. Don't forget Dogman. Do- I, d- I just clicked on yeah. Dogman phenomena. <laughs> Dogman, yeah. A lot more sightings of Dogman popping up. Um, this was on the 8th? Wow. Well, this is her encounter was was back in when she was younger, but this is she came forward recently. Oh, she just reported it. Yep. So that's interesting. So we're seeing a lot of these upright um canine type creatures. Yeah. What are the they? dog? What's the what's the dog? Of the, yeah. What does yeah, the dog symbolize, Jerry? Is it some kind of deity? Um uh, in, in what symbolize where? You know, it could mean a lot of things. It could mean I'm a lot sure of it has a Native American context. Mm-hmm. I know it has Egyptian context. Right. It could it's be, Anubis, right? Anubis. Yeah, Anubis. Oh. It could be um could be skinwalkers or astrally projected people oh man as their spirit animal you know yeah you gotta think a lot of things look like dogs the whole canine family you've got so All right it could be a lot of things could be fake too or it could be nothing right? exactly yep could be nothing <laughs> but you know if if even one of the cases is true then it's something Leo, you, Leo, you got any good black-eyed kids stories just on hand? Oh, um, I, I mean, nothing, like, nothing personal. Like, um, oh, I'd hope not. I'd, I'd well, hope t- if you had I, a black-eyed kid. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I, I did have a. I don't know if they were black-eyed kids, but I did have an unusual counter a long time ago when I was, <laughs> um, back when I worked for um a cable company. I was dispatched to a to a, an apartment complex and of course I had my van and stuff. So I, after I came out of the building, I was walking outside to uh, look into the juncture, um, the junction box where all the cable was. And these two kids walked up to me. They kind of came out of nowhere. I don't know where they came from. They like, they kind of like where my van was, they walked from beyond the van. Like there's, I didn't see them come out from a distance, but they, they, they walked up to me and I don't know, they were about 10, 11 years old. And they said, sir, we really need a ride back home. And I'm like, um, no, I can't give you a ride. And I said, I'm, I'm in a, for one, I'm in a company van. And, and for two, you shouldn't be asking to ride rides from strangers anyway, yeah, right? <laughs> especially people who, who drive vans, by the way. Um, so I was like, no, I'm sorry. I can't help you. And, uh, they seem really, uh, they were acting weird. Like, I don't know what was going on. Um, and they, I just kind of brushed it off and they're like, they're like, well, we really need a ride. We really need you to give me a ride. Give us a ride, please. And I'm like, no, I can't, I can't do it. So I just ignored them, walked off. When I came back out, um, I was in my van. I turned around <laughs> and they were both standing there. And they said, sir, we really need a ride home. And I'm like, I've already told you, I can't give you a ride home. And I asked them, I said, well, where do you live? And it was like, we live that way. They didn't really give me a, a exact location. They just mm-hmm. kind of pointed in a general direction. And I was like, no, I, I cannot give you a ride home. I'm sorry. You're going to have to walk. You're going to have to find another way. And, um, that was it. I got my van and took off. But now, Bye, Felicia. and I didn't really pay attention to their eyes back then because uh, I was busy with my hands working on stuff. Um, and then after getting into like uh, the black eye kid stories and stuff, and uh, I remembering that particular encounter with with those kids, um, kind of creeps me out because I don't know. Yeah, I'm that not sure. That is a weird story. Because there have been stories of like these things showing up in broad daylight Mm -hmm. they don't just come at night so man creepy shit creepy shit give me you're gonna run it if you you run run into them if you run into them do not let them in no don't do that why Uh, i don't know no one knows (laughs) <laughs> no one knows exactly. It's like don't let them in. Why well, not? I, well, then let them in, Jerry, and tell us. Tell us what happens. I haven't seen any. 
And if I did, if people were bugging me that much, tell them to fuck off, and then I'd try to hit them with my car. <laughs> Especially if they had creepy black eyes. I'd be like, be gone, mopes. Mopes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mopes. Goth freaks. Okay, this is from... Kids, get off my lawn. Arr. Let's see if there's anything good on this one. What you got, Graham? Got a story uh, of a lovely lady. No. This thing's like 100 pages long. That's not a story. <laughs> too many words. Too Way too many words. TLDR. See, I think that's what, like when you brought up like um, having like a, a conference convention, that's what it should be. We should have like, when people come in, they should tell like their stories about um, their interactions or anything they've encountered. Yeah, like a user, or not a user, but a, uh, a attendee con- attendee speech. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, just like well, one big giant roundtable. I'd li- yeah, exactly. I'd like to do roundtables with various people, but multiple ones, not just one big one. <laughs> it was cool hearing everyone actually ask all the que- you know ask questions of to to the presenters, you know. You, yeah, because you know, we got all these ideas and all these thoughts, you know, and it's like finally you got some dude that's standing up there that might know something. See, they're like us without podcasts. It, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, man. TLDR. Well, anyway, uh, I just want to uh, shout out my brother, Ryan, who just left for Qatar for his last tour of duty and a 20, well, he's in, he's been in for over 17 years and you, in the United States air force. And, uh, I'm super proud of the dude and uh, I'm glad, uh, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for his, uh, work and his sacrifice. Amen. And, uh, thanks bro. Love you, dude. Shouts out. Much love, James, hey, man. brother. Love and He's light. doing doing hard doing doing hard work, man. He's doing it, man. Is he there for a six month tour or one year? It this is his last like required tour. It's probably six months. No, it's still it's like four months, I think. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Send him good vibes. They, they let him go, they let him do it early, so he's doing it now. And dude, he leaves at home. He's got a wife and three kids. And uh, this is the last one. And then, you know, I mean, I don't know. I mean this is going to be uh, just from experience. This is going to yeah. be an easy last one. So sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm it, I mean, shit's off. It's, it's, uh, you never know, man, over there. Well, yeah, you never know, but yeah. I mean, and it's, uh, it's about, about probably about as worse as it's getting right now over there too. So, yeah, but uh, he's not a fucking marine. He's not. He's no. He's not. He's not. He's not doing some super high end uh, front line shit. But yeah. he's in charge of C one thirties and you know transportation and those are fun. Yeah, so he's in charge of all that and the logistics and um, you know, you got to get somewhere. You know, he's in charge of that shit, dude. He runs. Think, a, uh, he's like fucking operations manager, dude. A C one thirty. They have yeah. four propellers. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe that they can still fly and run off one. Off of one. Yeah. Propeller yeah. In the I event mean, they've been hit. Cause they only fly like, I think it's like 80 miles an hour is like their top speed or something like it's just really, really slow. So anytime yeah. you're like in these planes, yeah. like when you, when everyone stages in Qatar and they fly to their, their fobs, you know, whether it's Iraq or right. Afghanistan, you have to take C-130s or you have to take C-17s. And uh, C-130s are very uncomfortable because it's like being um, um, a fish in a sardine can. I mean, you're just cramped in there. You have all this, all your uh, your armor, your um, your body gear on and stuff, and you're just like right next to each other. The seats are completely uncomfortable. There's nowhere to, to move. <laughs> it's a bench. By the time you get out, like your, your legs are numb. You can't, like it's just, <laughs> it's terrible. And if you get shot at, you have to do a combat landing. So you're like doing twists and turns and all kinds of on stuff yeah i mean i just I, i've always been uh 
I don't know. I, I support the dude for sure. And, uh, he's an inspiration and, uh, I just, yeah, again, man, just love you, dude. Stay safe. And he Stay listens. Safe. He'll come, he'll be on the show one of these days. Hey, sure. we got to get him on. I'd love to yeah. be with you, bro. It'd be awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> but other than that, man, dude, it was a blast again hanging yeah, out. Yeah, man. This is uh, a good time. Fucking Crypticon. Crypticon. Dude, thanks. Chad Leonidas. <laughs> Chad Leonidas. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, man. It was definitely fun. Yeah. yeah. Can't wait For to sure. do it again. Yeah. And, um, We'll try to get more people to come out for sure. Hey, dude, yeah, you, yeah. I mean, like we, we like, like, dude, like Jerry is saying, just fuck this, man. We'll just do our own event. Yeah, yeah. yeah you could. I, I think, I think we five. get all these same people just to come to that one, dude. Yeah, I yeah. think five people was. It was hard to keep track of just us. Exactly. Oh, yeah. So more people would be even more difficult. Dude, I couldn't imagine that. Mind well, I, blown. I think dude. if you yeah. get, you know, I, I get a lot of people. This has been my experience. If you get a lot of people together to go do something. You never see each other. So yeah. don't. It's tough. Don't get like attached to plans unless you have tickets for something. Plans. Like, like a show in Vegas. I like, I'm talking about like going, to, I went to Vegas, my family, my whole family, you know, and you never see them anymore. If they, especially if they're in a different hotel. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool having everybody on the same grounds, you know, I mean, including the uh, speakers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, dude. How about after when Travis took us to his room? Oh, <laughs> what? That's fucking awesome. <laughs> I'm <laughs> jealous. <laughs> I'm, you you wouldn't. You're day drinking all. The, <laughs> uh, no, I only had one beer. That, that <laughs> James got abducted. But I'm kidding. Travis was totally cool. What, Bill? <laughs> I was just wondering if he actually had one of the hot tub rooms. The hot tub room. Oh yeah, yeah I bet he did heart, have a hot a tub room. Hot tub. I it's guarantee it. I bet he took one of those Wisconsin masseuses up there too. <laughs> yeah, hey there. I'm gonna rub your back, eh? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, oh, a little curd while you're waiting. So yeah. Cruisingwithsteak.com. Uh, Cruisingwithsteak.com. Cruisingwithsteak on all hey, your listening dude, devices. Cruisingwithsteak.com is not a website. It goes to nowhere. Why don't you fix that? I know, James. Uh, if you on? type in a search in, and it leads you, you right go, to your... If you go to cocksteak.com. Uh, like you... No, James, yeah. what do you got to do? Like, I have it linked to your name, dude. So if you type it in, it just... I know, but you name. have to, James, you have to um, forward that domain to grimstake.com. Yeah, because right now, if uh, I go to cruising... Right now, it's just a blank. There's nothing there. It's blank. Com. Well, you want it to go to your Libsyn. Not, you don't want... You don't oh, want yeah, 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 yeah. Either it's, way. It's just a blank page. It's a blank domain so go to grimstake.com. <laughs> I love you. Uh, <laughs> no, actually, I made a whole massive site on Squarespace, and now you know now they want money. And I'm a <laughs> James, I James, I told you uh, to get in touch with me, and I would do it for I, free. I'll do it for free, James. I told you that already. <laughs> well, I'll show you my, uh, you know, maybe when we get out the pool. Yeah, let's Register let's wrap, the, let's cool, wrap this up. We'll talk about this off the air. Just love you guys. Z- love and light. Cksteak.com. Cucksteak.com takes you right Jesus to the Libsyn. Uh, yeah. Check out Nox Mente. Nox Mente. Uh, yeah. yeah. And Nox Leonidas. You can oh. put that in your fucking web browser. Oh, and check out uh, Sir, <laughs> Sir Felix.bandcamp.com because Felix had to bail earlier. So Sir Felix.bandcamp.com. Yeah. And Hasselbill in uh, the Congress. Yeah, Hasselbill in the Grimerica chats. Yeah, the he's, chats. He's in Discord chat or our, our chats too. Yeah. It's all the chats. Bill's the handler. Yeah. And you guys have a great night. We are gone. Right on, brother. Bye. Bye. Good night. All right. Off the air. What is there some kind of time limit? No. But we were going to talk about other stuff and it was like wrap up. Uh, I was going to do a shout out for my site, but that's okay. <laughs> oh. I'm powered up again. Well, <laughs> hey. You kind of come. <laughs> dude, we're still recording. I'm still recording. It'll go on the podcast. Yeah, yeah this plug still go site. on the podcast. Yeah, dude, plug your site. No, we I was just gonna say uh, we didn't I'm have just any your balls, anyway. Man. Oh man, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll plug it anyway. No, I was gonna say you can find everything I'm doing at housebythevideostore.com, and um, mm-hmm. you can find me specifically on Twitter at uh, Bringer of Spears, Leonidas. Woo. And then um, next month, I'm gonna start shooting my next film, which is gonna be based off the Black Eye Kids. So keep a lookout for that. 
and hopefully get it released before Halloween. It's going to be kind of close, but I think we can get it done. Nice. I'm excited. Dude. Uh, exciting thanks, and thanks for the, it's thanks for the merch, dude. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Merch. Sure. Thanks for that. I wore, I wore my shirt yesterday. Nice. <laughs> thank you for everything. Yes. Dude. Yeah. You. And Oh my God. Mm-hmm. It was a great weekend and uh, bringing all the minds together and bodies and uh, yeah. bodies. Yeah. Big good hugs, stuff. bro. Yeah, for sure. It was such a good time. <laughs> oh yeah. It was yeah. like this, but about a million times better. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's great. Great being face to face. So that'll I'm do rent, it. I'm going to be renting a room out in, in Grim Stakes house soon. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I'm moving in. We do it. My whole family. Sweet. Come on. <laughs> you live with my parents and me. No, fuck that, man. You got to move in my house. I got Dude, that's what I'm me. saying, man. I'm yeah. out Cleveland. Cleveland. I can't even talk. Cleveland way better, dude. Yeah, it probably is. All right, guys. Gotta get a, we can get a conference here. Thanks for listening to Cruise on Steak. Hey, oh, uh, shout out to Felix again and check. Stay tuned for uh, next week when we're going to do a rock and roll um, history, rock and roll uh, <laughs> conspiracy history, 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 history type thing. Yeah, man, it's going to be cool as fuck. Uh, folklore. Yep. Rock yeah, and roll folklore. folklore. Uh, maybe um, we can mix it in with uh, the craziness of how we do. And uh, I think it could be a really fun show, man. So hell yeah. So that's another- Tuesday. Yep. yep. Same time. Yep. Same place. Same time. Same, same place. Channel. Okay. Same yep. Grime channel. Right. Uh, Grime. And maybe we'll have some uh, guests pretty soon. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, maybe I got to get on the horn here. Get on yeah. that horn. <laughs> All right. Love, peace, and so bacon gotta... grease. What? Love, peace, Hours. and bacon grease. <laughs> I sent for you, but you never came around. Look at the shape that I'm in now. Look crying out loud. You left me standing in the freezing cold. Now my tattered umbrella doubles as a lightning rod for lightning bolts. If I could ever cadabra. I'd reach out and grab you and take you home with me. And baby girl, you'd be my queen. Is this heaven? Have I found you? Or is this purgatory? never-ending story and the confusion with the illusion and the confusion with the illusions and the confusion with the illusions is this heaven Have I found you? Or is this purgatory a never-ending story? And the confusion with the illusion And the confusion with the illusion And the confusion with the illusions Left me standing in the freezing cold And now my tattered umbrella doubles as a lightning rod for lightning bolts If I could abracadabra, I'd reach out and grab ya Take you home with me, baby girl you'd be my queen If I could abracadabra, I'd reach out and grab ya Girl, you would be my queen.
Baby girl, you be my queen. Baby girl, you be my queen. Hablando los azules. Thank you.